Well, hi all. Welcome to our webinar. We're, uh, my name is Mike Lockerbie. I'm the co-founder of Bitstrata Systems. We're the makers of the Agromatics product line. Today we're going to do a couple things. We'll give an overview of Libra for those of you that are new to it. Uh, we won't delve quite as deep as we did on, on the previous seminar that we did a year ago. Uh, but we'll give some highlights so people get familiar, as well as talk about some changes that have happened just since last year. Generally minor, but one major thing. And the, the primary thing that we're going to cover is Agrometics Aero, our cloud service, which launched about three weeks ago and uh, has had some very exciting stuff, sort of a new dimension for Aero users. Uh, and at the end, we'll have a question and answer period. Uh, the webinar lets you type in uh, questions really at any time, but I'll, I'll uh, field them at the end of the presentation. So on your screen right now, you should see uh, an iPad. And uh, what I'll do is I'll start, I'll start the video camera as well so you can see me using that iPad. So hi everybody, and this is the iPad, and it's just being uh, using a piece of software that, that lets it be shown on your screen quite clear, clearly as well. And so uh, I'll give you a background here on Libra. Libra is a iPad-based grain cart weighing and data management system. Uh, it certainly uses an iPad to go wireless to electronics that you place on your cart. It works with systems that already have weigh scales, or if you buy the system from factory, uh, it comes with weigh scales, of course, but it needs weigh scales that we don't make. Uh, there's a couple of makers that, that uh, provide those kinds of things. But typically on, on traditional weighing systems, you'd have a, a weigh scale indicator that lives on the, in the cab of the tractor and there's a cable that goes across from the cart itself from a junction box that has all the weigh bars across the hitch to the, typically the underside of an indicator. And an indicator, is a, uh, as most of you are probably aware, of, is a, a piece of industrial electronics with a, an LCD display. Looks a little bit like what you see in front of you. Uh, that's because we're mirroring ours to look a little like that to be familiar and useful. With our system, instead of using that piece of electronics, you replace that with our electronics. I can just show you here. This is the Agromatics Libra, uh, Libra device, we call it. It's a small device about the size of a pound of butter. And instead of placing this in the cab of the tractor, which you can do if you want, uh, typically, you would install this on the front face of a cart. Uh, some OEMs that produce carts would instead uh, place it just behind one of the baffles that many of the cart designs have. There are two vertical support baffles uh, behind which typically the junction box is located where all the wiring from each of the load cells go together. And then a single cable would typically go across the hitch. But in our case, just coil up that cable, mount this to the front surface or behind that, that wall. Um, typically in this orientation to keep the connector facing down, just one more step in, in keeping it protected against the weather, uh, although it is a, a sealed box and, and weather uh, proof. I happen to have it connected to a simulator right now so I can pretend to be, uh, I can pretend to change weights uh, as a cart would do as it's loaded and unloaded. The, the Libra device that I just showed you is battery operated, so when you do an install, uh, like an upgrade from a typical system with an indicator is really simple. There's no cables that go across the hitch. Like I say, coil up that cable, mount the box, enable the battery. There's a pull tab, you pull it, and it's running. And then uh, the, the customer would provide their own iPad of sorts, like this one, um, and configure it. The app itself is freely downloadable from either the Apple website as an Apple App Store or Google Play for Android customers. Uh, we're using Apple. We developed for Apple first, so all of our new features, including Arrow, which we'll talk about shortly, uh, all those new features always come up for Apple products first, and we'll get to the Android as we have resources to do so. So, <clears throat> again, iPad-based wireless grain cart weighing and data management system. It's got uh, the app itself. It has a familiar look. It shows like a, an LCD display, two displays, really. The upper display it shows the net weight that's on the cart, and the lower display shows the gross weight. So the lower display will always show whatever's on the cart, no matter what, whereas, like in this case, we have 17,250 pounds of gross weight. If I choose to hit the tear button, my net display 
shows up as zero. So now it's, it's like a placeholder. It lets me add or, or subtract weight from it. Um, so adding mean from the, from the combine will get more weight. I can demonstrate that here with the simulator as I crank up the weight. It goes up from zero, whereas you can see the gross weight rose from uh, 17,250. Now we added 1,000 pounds to 18,250. If on the other hand, we drop weight, it can go below zero. The system is entirely automatic so that uh, when the fields, uh, when the correct field has been selected from a list that you've set up and the truck is selected, if you want to track the truck, then as you start to dump into the truck, uh, the system will automatically pick that up. So here we're, we're starting to dump out. The system has picked up that, uh, that so far 3,600 pounds has been dumped and we can continue to dump and that sort of thing. Uh, ultimately, you can see that on the, on the lines below these buttons, down here, field two, truck one, etc. It shows what has been dumped so far onto the truck, shows what's been harvested so far from the field. And you can see too, some of the new features that, uh, that our previous customers will notice is uh, it now shows what the commodity is on the field that we're harvesting or selected and on the truck that's being loaded. And it shows how much of the truck, just below the empty button right there, you can see that there's a blue line to indicate that we're nearly half full as configured. Uh, people can, the operator can easily change any of these as well by tapping the, for instance, the field button. Uh, and from a set of lists that you've got pre-configured, you do this typically before harvest. You can do it certainly in field as well if you want, but you're busy. So you can select from, when you select the field, you can select from grower, farm, and field. The system is really, really flexibly set up, much like some of the mainline uh, manufacturers of equipment. Um, some of them call it client, farm and field is the same thing. So here we'll, we'll select field two. Uh, if I guess we were on two, we'll select one. It shows that's corn. Let's go back, we're gonna go back to two for now. And uh, the weight uh, goes to the selected truck, if you wanna track trucks. Uh, once, once that truck is known to have been emptied, uh, you would, the, the card operator would hit the empty button and uh, the weight would go from the selected truck to the, to the bin itself. The system was warning me there that I was mixing my commodities and for the purposes of this demonstration, I'm not gonna go into nuances about that. Um, and you can also select destinations from lists of like groups of destinations and uh, des destinations are typically bins within that group. Uh, people can, can organize things however they would like. For instance, you can have uh, destination groups can be yards and then bins within a yard, as many of those as you like. Or you, people would set them up as contracts, like 2015 contracts or that kind of thing. And, and just it's like folders on a PC. You can just organize things the way you like. And very, very simple to select. Just tap and go. So the card operator isn't burdened here. There's a few other things too. You can set up uh, lists of operators. In this case, it was Jasmine that was operating this, but I can select and, and choose myself. Uh, there's some, some sound perhaps in the background that you'll hear where there's some construction going on in the building right now. Um, also, there's a few other things that you can select from. Here's a, you can enter, if you've done a manually measured moisture measurement, you can enter here and change that. All of these things that are selected, the field, the truck, the bin, the operator, all of them, as selected, will get associated with every load that's automatically detected. Here you can set temperature for the, for the uh, commodity that you're harvesting. Here, if you've done a test weight measurement, you can enter that and that gets recorded as well. But the actual recording is done hands-free once, once the operator has selected the field, which he would change. As he changes fields, he'd select a different field. As If he chooses to track the truck, he would change that. And, uh, but past that point, it's all automatic. I've been talking about uh, the way that when you do track through the truck, that weight goes from the selected field to the selected truck and stays there until it's time that you know that that truck's been emptied. At that point, it moves from the truck to the selected destination, typically a bin. But for those that uh, don't want to be bothered in, in tracking the truck, you can select from the lists, no truck. And that's done again for those that, that can't be bothered because they're just too busy to do that sort of thing. Or uh, there are some operations that you would do where you don't involve a truck, like loading grain bags. So you just select no truck. In that case, the flow works a little bit differently. It goes from the selected field directly to the selected destination. Uh, a couple other things to note about the, the main page here. 
if you look again at the light green area where the LCD readouts are, if you look on, on this iPad, you'll see the word auto. What that means is that in the settings for this app, it's been set up to do automatic load detection. And that's what I've been talking about all along. Every time that the system determines that the, system, that, uh, the card is being unloaded, then indeed it, it uh, records that transaction automatically. You can see, I think I demonstrated already the tear and clear buttons. Uh, the other two buttons are the unload and save button. Those are for those, that, those people that want to uh, override the automatic nature and do something um, manually. And so if you want to, you can just tap on unload and then you can select from a few options to do some, uh, some uh, special things. And then you can hit save, pardon me. So, uh, and you can do that at, at any time. You can continue to leave the, the system in automatic mode, but you can, you can override and go uh, manual unload and then save and that sort of process. Uh, if we scoot over way over to the settings page, <clears throat> uh, I, I may leave this for later. I was going to show you how, how you can change from automatic mode to manual mode. In manual mode, under the settings, it's always manual. Nothing happens until you hit unload and save. Okay, that kind of covers the first page. And so new features there are that we show the commodity for the field and the truck and the, and the bin as well as it shows the progress bar for the truck to show how much it's full. Uh, if we move now forward to the fields tab, there's four tabs actually, the fields, the trucks, the destinations, and operators. These are areas where you can configure the system. You can set up all the fields for your farms and all the farms for your grower, or if you're growers actually. Typical operations would probably have a single grower and one or more farms and many fields per farm. Uh, but for custom harvesters, they, they may appreciate the, the fact that you can have multiple growers as well, so multiple clients. Uh, if we drill into that, just tap the fields tab, and it shows the list of growers. Now, I only have one grower in here, but if you wanted to, you could press the plus button, and then you can add a grower. Just type in a name. Like we'll call it me. And now there's another grower there. And currently, if we, if we drill into the grower that was already there, uh, there's just a single farm. We can add a farm by tapping the plus again and, and adding a name. You can drill into any of those farms here and add fields. And you can see that this is also where you'll uh, see the data as harvested. So if we drill into the wheat field here, uh, you can see that it's selected with a check mark. I'm going to tap the I with a circle, and that'll show me all the transactions that have been recorded for that field. And there could be a, a very long list. Here I've got two transactions that have been recorded. And the de field details are shown here. I can change the name if I want to. Uh, I can change the area. It shows the total of all transactions that have been recorded on that field. The left, uh, at the total line, the left versus right weights are dry versus wet. Uh, right now, they're all identical because the, the moisture that had been recorded with each load aligned with the standard test with the, excuse me, a standard moisture for that, for that commodity. Uh, you can select for a field uh, a commodity here, uh, wheat, HRS has been selected. So summer, we can tap on uh, select commodity and we can choose from the long list of commodities that are pre-set up, but you can add new commodities by ha typing the plus, And then it would ask you a few things like, what's the name of this commodity? Um, enter the standard test weight and the standard moisture and you create the new one. Any of the ones that are pre-populated, like from factory, you can go in and edit the standard test weight if there's a reason, perhaps using a particular variety that just, just is different. You can set that up, but you can always add new varieties and name them so you can keep, keep them apart. I'll just go back again. And uh, so this shows all the transactions. Here's where it gets really interesting. For any one transaction, you can drill down on that one by tapping the eye with a circle, and you'll see information about that particular uh, cart load. And uh, here, that load that was harvested, was it shows that it was harvested from field two, shows it went on truck one and went into bin one. And if, if you need to edit, you just tap, uh, for instance, tap over to field one, and now that load's associated with that one. We'll just leave it where it was. Similarly, you could say, no, I made a mistake. It wasn't bin one, it was new bin. Tap that, and then it, it disappears from this, uh, this uh, well, it stays on this field unless I was to hit field one. If I was looking at destinations, it would just disappear off one destination and appear in another. You can add notes for that particular transaction. 
So very, very flexible, very, very, very easy editing capabilities. And all the other tabs, like, like we just went through fields, trucks, destination, and operators work the same way, just with different levels of, of uh, hierarchy. So in this case, here's trucks. With trucks, instead of grower, farm, and field, you have truck groups and trucks within each group. So you can have as many truck groups as you like and as many trucks within each group that you like. So here we'll dr drill into this truck group. And had we wanted to add one, we would just hit plus again, just like all, all cases, add a new name and you got a new group. We'll just drill into, into the one that is currently called truck group. And we see that we have one truck in it and it currently holds uh, summer, HRS. And if we, uh, if we go in, into, drill into that truck, we can see the configured, the name, the configured tear and configured GVW for that truck. Those are helpful. And when you want to use the manual unloading capabilities of Libra, you can tell it based on the weight that's currently on the truck, you can tell it to do things like fill to max GVW or add a certain amount, this kind of thing. And it uses some of these parameters to help it do that job. And here you can see the totals on that truck so far. These are grain cart loads that are on there and you can drill down into any which one of them if you want to. It's really the same editing uh, table that you saw that we used in the fields. So you can get access to all of your information through either the fields tab, the trucks tab, or the destinations tab. They all work about the same, just different ways to get it. So we go on to the destinations. And here, again, we have groups. Uh, we have a destination group, was, that's a, just kind of a generic name I gave it. But I just recently added contracts for 2015. But we could add other things too. I might you know, choose to add an elevator. That makes any sense. Add that, and then you can drill down into that one. Pardon me, and add add destinations for that one. Perhaps different elevators, that kind of thing. If that's the case, I might choose to just rename this one to be elevators plural. Okay. Similarly, contracts. You might have your contracts for 2015 stored in this particular destination group. But typically, uh, I think that I would set things up. So I'll just change this one to be called. Instead of destination group, I'll call this one home yard. And now I would have been set up in my home yard. So this is, um, this is something that those customers that are familiar with our system, this is another minor change that we made uh, from last year. Uh, we did a webinar highlighting the new version then, and we're doing this one just to, to recap the general operation and highlight the differences. So the differences were that a year ago, to drill into, say, this destination set of destination groups, to drill into the home yard, you would have to uh, accurately tap the I with a circle, like, like that. We've reversed that now so that to edit the name, you have to be accurate and, and type the, or tap the I with a circle, and now you can change the name, whereas now it's easier to drill down, which is a more common operation. So just tap anywhere on the line, and it, and it drills down. That was requested by a number of customers, so we've responded with that makes things easier. And if we move forward onto the operators tab, uh, it's, it's a flat hierarchy, so you can just have a list of names of people that will be operating the cart. And here I've added uh, me, Jasmine, and uh, Ezra. So that is the basis of the thing. And uh, we'll just uh, quickly delve into the devices and settings uh, tab, plus any new ones that, that are uh, cropped up here. Uh, before we do that, we will just uh, just talk about this. The, the iPad itself is the device doing all the heavy lifting. It's communicating with the Libra device that's connected to the bars, and it's collecting all the data automatically, typically. Um, it's letting you visualize things. It's letting you see the data, edit the data. But when you want to get that data home, the way that you can do that is you tap Typically, double tap on the fields tab. That'll make sure that it's at the grower level. There's other ways to get there as well by hitting the back button, etc. But double tapping is a quick, easy way to get to the grower level. In the upper right-hand corner is a share button. And if you tap on that, the share button is the, is the box with an arrow coming at the top. It'll build an email uh, and with a, a text listing, a summary of all the fields that you've harvested, totals for those fields. But the important part, in my mind anyway, are there's a couple, a couple attachments. We'll just chat about the transactions one. That file there is a CSV file, a comma separated value file that can be loaded by any spreadsheet uh, like Excel or others. And in that, can, it contains 
all of the transactions, with all the data associated with each transaction uh, that the system has ever recorded. So across seasons, you name it, all your data is right there. And every time that you choose to email it up, uh, typically there's more data because you've done some harvesting since then. Uh, we could have elected to instead do a diff, uh, an incremental approach where, um, or a differential approach where every time we email something out, we only give you the information that's changed since the last time. We don't do that. It's a little bit safer. That way, if you, if you had an email crash or you lost an email for whatever reason, just, just send it home again and you've got all your data loaded in, in Excel and you can edit, so you can filter with programs like Excel very easily on dates or on commodities or, or whatever you want, very, very flexible. All right, so let's move on to the device tab. Just a brief inter introduction. This one here uh, is the place where you set up the electronics to be compatible with the particular load bars that you have on your cart. You can enter things that can be read typically off the load bars themselves, like sensitivity and rated capacity. Uh, our help file, which has been improved since last release, uh, which is built into the app, uh, will explain exactly how you, how you go about doing that. Uh, there's also a getting started card that comes in the box with each Libra that, that um, goes through it in, in, in just the right amount of detail. Really short, really sweet, not difficult, but it'll get you up and running. And then it, this one also lets you calibrate the electronics with, uh, with loads like weights that have come off the Libra as well as from a trusted scale like uh, at an elevator or something. And that way you can uh, get the Libra giving accurate weights uh, more, like, more like the elevator. So you type in a couple weights here, one from this, uh, from the Libra itself, and one from, that's the cart reading, and one from a certified scale or a trusted scale there. You hit calculate and it'll build the correct a calibration factor based on its old calibration factor and those two uh, numbers. Save settings, it pushes the new calibration back into the electronics and now from then on, even over battery switching and everything, that unit continues to, keep, pardon me, continues to keep the same calibration numbers so that it's always uh, yielding good information. No matter which mobile device you're using to be connected to it, you'll see the, the same calibrated weights. Move on to settings. Here's where you can uh, adjust some general settings like units, weight units. Uh, you've got a choice of pounds, kilograms, or bushels, temperature units in Celsius or Fahrenheit. Uh, down in the middle of the screen is where we have a list of paired devices. In this case, uh, the paired device that it's speaking about is the Libra device, the electronics, and we've named it CART1. You might want to name it uh, after your particular equipment from whatever manufacturer that was. Like, uh, I won't mention any, any particular manufacturers, but you could name it so that it's a quick reference. If we go back to the main display, you'll see not only can you uh, select in with the blue text there from fields, trucks, bins, and operators, but just to the right of mic, you'll see cart one. So you can also select which cart device you happen to be connected to at any point in time. So back to settings. Uh, if you drill down into a particular cart, you can change the name of it. Uh, you can change the way the display behaves. We've got this one set up to, to round every 50 pounds. And so uh, if you wanted to, you could say, no, I want to see a little bit more uh, graduation there. So if we go to 25 or 20 pounds, we can take it all the way down to one. But typically, uh, if I were operating it, I'd operate it at 20, 25, or 50, something like that. So the way would have to change more than 25 pounds uh, when we select a a display rounding of 50, you'd have to have more than 25 pounds before it would register to the next level. And it doesn't mean that, uh, that your accuracy is any less. The recorded weight remains uh, to the pound, but this is what you see on screen. So it's a little bit less uh, dithering. The next couple lines relate to automatic unload detection. Uh, when, you, when you pair up to a new Libra device, it automatically uh, is defaulted to unload detection is enabled. And you, I by far recommend that. It works just absolutely awesomely. And leave the min load at 1,000 pounds. That is factory default, and that, is, uh, that works on, on virtually all situations. The last one is smoothing. And what that is, is our system, as you know, automatically detects loading. It also does, excuse me, unloading. It also does loading. So loading from a combine, unloading to truck. 
So it knows when it's not doing either of those two things. With smoothing on, uh, when it's not doing those critical phases, it smooths out the display so you end up with the most accurate uh, readings possible. When, uh, if you didn't have that on and you're bouncing through the field, the weight can vary a lot, like 10,000 10, pounds, that kind of thing. And it can be distracting. So you turn on smoothing, then when you're traveling through the field, it's, it's rock solid. But the system, as it knows that when you're unloading or loading, it uh, turns that temporarily off so that the, the display is very, very responsive. The reason that we turn it off from factory is because new customers, typically when they install the system, they want to see that it's actually weighing. And so they'll stand on the hitch or something like that just to, just to get a feel. Well, if you had smoothing on, uh, standing on the hitch is not the same as unloading. So the system will ignore that and it'll just keep it smooth. And, and customers, uh, new customers might not understand uh, to expect that. So we turn it off. Once they get really comfortable with the system after just a short while, it's a great idea to turn that on and the experience is just that much better. To pair to a new uh, paired device, you just simply hit the plus button and the system will do a scan and look for one that it hasn't previously found. And you can type in that kind of information, the name and set up a few parameters and you're, and you're golden. We're gonna move on now. Okay, so one thing that I neglected to talk about was remote mode. So in, in the settings, uh, at the top where you can select uh, general settings like units, there's also remote. So I think I'm just going to go to two screens right now, or two, screen two that's got two devices on it. And uh, you can see that there's two mobile devices. We've got a, an iPhone and we've got this iPad that I've been looking at. And, uh, and as you can see, I'm hitting too many buttons here. As you can see, uh, the iPad shows the word auto, and that's to reflect that it's doing automatic unload detection. Like I said, you could turn that off in the, in the general, excuse me, in the settings for the specific uh, Libra device that, uh, that you've paired to. Generally, we, we just rarely have customers that would do that. Almost always would you set it up to auto. But if you look at the iPad, it's set up in remote mode. And you got to that through its settings uh, page in the app settings tab. And uh, with that, it operates just slightly differently. So it's the main iPad in the cab of the tractor that is doing all the heavy lifting. It's communicating, it's recording, it's presenting the user interface, it's doing all those things. That the data is, is collected there and you'd email it home from there. Whereas a remote display, as this one's configured for, all it's really doing is listening in to the weights that are being broadcast out of the Libra device. And so it can see the very same weights. You see they're, they're operating in tandem. And if I were to increase the weight, then they're gonna track each other and go up. And to be fair, they're not really tracking each other. They're both listening to the Libra device. So re remote mode is, is fairly limited, but what it can do is powerful. Uh, it's limited in that it's not collecting any data, it's not, if you select a field or this and that, you're only looking at the data that happens to be in your device. You're not looking at the data that's in the iPad itself. But you are looking at the live weight on the cart. There's a limitation that you have to be within about a 400 foot range of the cart. So that limitation is just fine for many situations. Like if, if this is in the hands of the combine operator and the cart comes over to service him, he's well within that 400 foot range. He pulls it out, he's got uh, the app running in remote mode, and he can see that that cart's in this case got 14,000 pounds on it. Now he wants to, if he wants to calibrate his yield monitor, he can do it very easily by hitting his tear button. So his display now reads zero, even though like it doesn't impact anybody else's display. And you may have as many, you know, un, really an unlimited number of these um, these remote displays happening, with different um, different cart operators, excuse me, combine operators, truckers, etc. So now that cart looks like zero pounds to him. Although you can see that the gross weight on the, on the secondary display continues to show 14,000 pounds. Now every uh, pound that I put on the cart from the combine shows up as rising from zero. So I put this much on, now I know that, and I can use that to calibrate the yield monitor. Let's see. So the limitations there are 400 feet of range, uh, it's just great. 
the other thing I should mention is the main unit, the iPad, gets about 50 to 100 feet of range between the, the cab of the tractor and the cart. So again, perfectly fine in this scenario. Okay, so let's move on to some other tabs. So if I hit more on the iPad, you can see there's a new tab. And for those of you that were familiar with the old app, there's a new tab called Cloud. And we've, uh, we've improved the Help tab as well. And, and we now have one called About, which just shows the Libra version. We didn't show that before. Now it's a little clearer. Uh, if we look at the Help, uh, the Help has now uh, been uh, made more complete and much more beautiful than the old one. It's, it's separated into, into two categories. There's the initial setup, uh, in, excuse me, initial setup and installation. That's really about setting up the hardware. And it's, it goes through many of the same things that we cover in our getting started guide that is, uh, is in the box with every unit that we sell. And it talks about battery ins ins uh, installation, device installation on the card itself, the pairing process that, um, uh, that you need to do to get your mobile device connected to the card electronics itself, as well as uh, troubleshooting. Uh, this revolves entirely around communications, making sure that, that you've got the battery in the device and all the kinds of steps that you'd need. Configuration, uh, this, is the, this is like on the device tab. It talks about how you, how you uh, get information about the sensitivity and capacity of your, of your load bars and how you enter those, and the calibration itself uh, to make sure that you end up with with uh, accurate weights. And if we go back to the main there, there's a second part now that's about the app itself. And you can tap the getting started and it introduces it and it shows information on every tab that's on the, on the app. And if you want information specifically about uh, the display tab, for instance, how do I add an amount, tap on that and it brings you to that part of the manual. So it's, it's been made more clear and easier to understand and easier to access. Now here's where we where it gets exciting. Now we get into Arrow, and with that at the moment, I think I'm just going to move over, uh, show you our Arrow website. Okay, and so we'll start at the beginning. So typically, you, you find it from just one moment. So you, f you find it by typing in cloud.agromatics.com uh, in your browser, and uh, you're presented with this landing page. And uh, to, to sign in, you sign in with Google, and we'll get to that in a second. And I'll give you a little bit of background as to what Ag Agromatics Arrow is. It is a cloud-based data management system that integrates directly with Libra as well as third parties. Uh, we're working on integrations with a number of vendors. Uh, really, any that are interested, uh, we're working to, to make sure that they, they would have access to be able to serve you so that uh, if you're a customer of our Aero system and our Libra, uh, as well as a customer of a third party data system, and you want those two to have their data get married together, uh, that's, that's what this kind of a cloud service can, uh, can result in, but it's entirely in your hands as to how that works. So um, Arrow provides, there's two levels of service. There's Arrow Basic, which is free. It's, it provides automatic data backup. Uh, and and you, you can restore from that, and you can view your data from a, a web app, this, this cloud service as well, if you, if you choose to. Um, but with that, it's free. All you need to do is create a, an account and then sign into that from your mobile device. And then every time that there's any new information in that mobile device, relating to your harvest. So if there's new grain cart loads that are automatically recorded or manually recorded, or if you change uh, the names of your fields or do anything with that, add a field, anything new, it gets stored in the cloud instantly so long as you have internet access. And I should back up and say that this is a new product. Uh, this is a new service, Agromatics Arrow. It was launched about three weeks ago. And currently it is only supported by Apple mobile devices. We will work towards getting Android support uh, in it as, as soon as we can, but it's doubtful that it'll happen for Harvest 2015. Uh, just that's a heads up. Uh, we've had a lot of really good uptake of the product so far. People love both the, the basic, which I've just mentioned, again, automatic data backup, as well as the pro, which I'll get into in a second. 
So again, with basic, it's free. Just create an account. We'll talk, we'll get into how you do that momentarily. And then once the account is created, you sign into it on the mobile device with the same credentials that you use to get into the web app and, and you're syncing. Your data is being sent up to the cloud and you can view it on the desktop app. Um, and uh, if you did ever have any loss of your loss or damage or something, or reason to upgrade your mobile device, you just simply put a new one in its place and log into the system and all your data reappears within a couple minutes. Pretty exciting. Again, that's free and, and completely optional. There's no reason that you have to do that. I think I demonstrated how, how you can email your data out without a cloud service. This just makes it that much simpler. There's also Aero Pro, which is a subscription-based uh, cloud service, and it provides, uh, it's, it's got a subscription, annual subscription of $99 per user, again, annually, uh, and what it offers beyond data backup of AeroBasic is, is real-time data sharing between users on your farm, so users of the account. And uh, so what that allows is, in real-time, the data flows between the cart or carts and other users, like the trucker or the common operator or manager or whatever, and, and back and forth. And it just distributes that information and allows the, the players involved to be able to contribute to that to that process. For an, a simple example is, let's say you've got a, a small account, two users, a card operator and a trucker. Well, the card operator is using Libra and the system's automatically recording loads against a particular truck, in, let's say the red truck. So he takes the red truck from zero to uh, 20,000 pounds of payload. Uh, that Now the trucker can see by looking at his phone, because he's got access to the data in real time. He sees his truck's got 20,000 pounds of payload on it. And, and uh, in a bigger scenario where you've got a second cart, so another license, that first cart maybe goes away to get filled again from a combine, and a second cart comes in, he also sees that truck's got 20,000 pounds of payload. He can tell Libra, fill that truck for me, or help me fill that truck up to the legal limit. So that truck's selected. It, you can go then from the... 20,000 pounds of payload up to maybe 60,000 pounds before you've reached the, the max GVW that's been configured for that truck. And then when, it, when that's done, the cart operator's satisfied that he's, he's made that truck legal. The trucker's happy that he's, he can see that. Uh, he can then take his load confidently off to a bin yard of his choice and tell the system then, I just emptied my truck, say the red truck, into bin three, and he pressed the empty button. And now everybody will see that the inventory for that truck has gone back down to zero and the inventory for the bin is up to up by an extra, whatever I said, 20 or 30,000 pounds. And all the different users can see that. Different uh, users could then add notes to the transactions. They could add other information that they have, like moisture measurements or, or uh, measured test weights, that kind of thing. Very, very flexible. All right. So I got into a bit of detail there. Let's just talk about how you get in. So you, uh, we use Google to authenticate the users. So we don't uh, deal with passwords and that sort of thing directly. Uh, it's Google's uh, domain. So sign in with Google. Here I've got a couple accounts, uh, account, excuse me, users already set up. There's Mike Demo and Jasmine Demo. If you wanted to, uh, what you typically do, and unless you're familiar with using Google accounts already, Google users is you'd add an account. And uh, here you could could log in uh, or basically connect that account or uh, more likely create an account. And here you type in some information. Uh, here you'd be able to select a, a unique Google Gmail address because Google tracks uh, account uh, usernames and that sort of thing really by their Gmail account, Gmail um, address. But for those that just don't want to have a Gmail address, you can instead click this uh, it says, I prefer to use my current email. Do that. And then you just type in your current email. And then it'll associate your email with this account. But you just fill it out any which way. And you've created a Google user. And we, you'd hit next step. We won't bother with that right now. And instead, we'll just get back to where we were. I'm going to sign in using one of the ones that I configured before the webinar. So Mike Demo. And I need to remember my password, which I should be able to do. There we are. So if you're a first-time user uh, setting things up, uh, you would need 
you, you've, you've been let now into the Aero system, but you'd need to create an account. Now, what you see here is I've already got an account set up, but for those that are just getting started, again, you go to cloud.agromatics.com, you sign in with Google. If you don't already have a Google account, you create one, and then it brings you here and it would give you a message that says you, you're not currently registered with any accounts. And, and that we're talking about Aero accounts. And so what you do is you go to the accounts page and you'd click on add an account. In my case, you can see my account, which is called Agromatics Webinar uh, with information about it here. I happen to be set up as a pro user instead of a basic user. But you, like I say, you just add an account. And if I do it here, it'll warn me. It'll say, you are, already have an Aero account. If you'd like to add users to this existing account, click here, which will take me to the users page. Um, that's to avoid confusion. Some people, if they want to have three users, maybe they have three grain carts or for some other reason they want more than one user, uh, they would click create account multiple times. That's not really the way it's intended. So there are some legitimate situations where you may want to do that, but typically you'll create a single account and then attach a number of users to it. So I'm not going to bother creating an account. I already have one, but you would if, if it's your first go. Create an account and it'll show up as basic instead of pro. And then uh, it's already associated your Google user uh, account with this arrow account. Okay, so you're the user on that account. If you want more than one user, you typically go to the users page and you then add users. Click there and you can add more people. Uh, what what you, you need to go through that same process again where you're going to create if you don't already have these, uh, these Gmail accounts set up. They're the users themselves. They get attached to a particular arrow account. Yeah, and so if you, uh, if you are starting out, so you've created your account and it shows up with your account name and then the subscription level is basic, but there is a button, uh, I believe it's right here in a basic account that it says go pro or upgrade to pro. You click on that and it, you'll be able to put in your credit card information and upgrade the users or as many of those as you like, the users that you've set up for your basic account to become pro. And then you get all those features. And if you look across this, we'll call them, it's a tab bar. It's really meant to reflect the look and feel of the tab bar on the, on the app itself. Uh, if you look here, we have fields, trucks, destinations, and operators. Those should be quite familiar. And you can do similar kinds of things. If we go to fields, uh, it's organized just like, like the app, grower, farm, and field. You can drill down and have a look. And so here we've got our, our three fields. Um, and this is the data that I have in my setup right now. Uh, I think maybe at this point I should just back out and show you what you need to do to get things flowing. So you've created your account, and maybe it's basic. In our case, it's, it's pro, but it's the same concepts here. It's just the features are not quite as full-featured for, for basic. But to get data flowing, you need to sign in with your mobile devices. So let me just uh, get back to where we were. Just one moment. I need to change screens. I'm going to have to just do some technical time here. Okay, so we'll change the screen to screen two, I think. And here you can see again uh, the mobile devices. Okay, so maybe I'll just put a screen share again, or share my webcam, I mean. And so you can see here that if I tap on the cloud page, cloud tab, I can sign in with Arrow. And just like we had, had signed in in the, in the web app, now I'm going to sign with, with my user, and I'm going to allow it. And I'm signed in, simple as that. And it's there, you just saw how quickly that syncs, updated just now. And it does that periodically, and more importantly, it does that every time there's new data. So whether you're basic or pro, as long as there's an internet connection through either a data plan for your device, or tethering to a phone, or you get to a Wi-Fi hotspot in the home yard or somewhere like that, uh, then whenever that's, uh, the internet's available, data has, is sinking or has sunk. Okay, and uh, I think Jasmine has just 
sign into her her account on the mobile device on the iPhone. So you can see there's two devices. You remember that I had two licenses on my uh, Arrow account, and each each one you'll sign in with the, one of those two users into each of your mobile devices. So we got different users on each of those. All right. So I guess um, let, let's look at this. We're going. Let's just run through a workflow. So. Let's say we're filling, in this case, truck one. So I'm going to increase uh, the weight. No, I'm going to uh, decrease the weight, I should say, um, from my cart into a truck. And you, you can see that the system now picked up on that we're unloading. And the, uh, the weight on the truck just keeps rising and rising until I stop. And at some point here, the system will say that that process is obviously done. And it will show, let's wait for it. It'll show that we will have about 5,100 pounds put on that truck. And it shows that it's, the truck is still not very full. That's fine. But now you can see on your display that, uh, that also on the phone and in real time, within a second or two or three of the actual thing happening in the cart, as long as there's cloud connectivity, it shows up on the phone. So now that trucker can take his data and his truckload away to a particular bin. He can choose, well, I've only, I've only got a couple bins here, but let's just leave it where it is, and he can empty. And, and it's done that. And by now you should have seen that it also up updated on the, on the iPad, which indeed it clearly did. And if you drill into any of the data, I'll just use the iPad, it is physically larger. If we drill into the, uh, into the destinations for bin one, Okay, no, bin one. You can see that indeed there was 5,150 pounds stored there. We could do the same thing on the phone. Let's have a look here. Destinations, drill in. Fifty one hundred and fifty pounds. So it's it's uh, remarkable. And it scales. Like I said, it's $99 US per user annually. So if a small operation needs one or two licenses for their particular data flow, that's great. A large operation with a number of carts and, uh, and that many more semis um, <clears throat> and uh, common operators, anybody who's interested in that flow, uh, it just scales. So. Um, Yeah, I guess what I haven't shown yet and uh, is, and let's see how to do that. Let's go to both screens maybe. Yeah, it may not be all that easy to, to see. I'll get rid of my the webcam business. It might make it a little bit easier. And that also happens, uh, it, data flows between, uh, for pro anyway, it flows between the mobile devices, but also up to the cloud where you can log in on the, on the web app and, and have a look. So if we look, um, Let's just look at the fields, grower, new farm. We're just drilling down and look at where are we on field one. Let's have a look here. Yeah, field one. And we look at the at the loads. Where are we? I have to go look in a moment. Yeah, I think I put that load somewhere else, but um, it shows it shows uh, all the data is synchronized between the two. And you can see the wet and the dry, and you can see it uh, mirrors exactly what you see on these devices as well. Just dig in and see it. Yeah. All synchronized. If you make an edit to uh, a name, I can try that here. So let's just call this field 10 instead of field 1. And just look in the fields. So you can see already that it's, uh, it shows. Hang on a second. There. You can see that. Yeah, that on both mobile devices, it shows 
Field 10 there is the name. And then if we get out of here, it shows field 10 there. So data synchronizes in real time across all the devices. Okay, is that, uh, I, think we're that I think that's it. Oh, one other feature, actually, I'll just go back and just look at my list of features to mention. The new features in the latest version of, of uh, Libra, we covered that there's more information and icons and that kind of thing for the user experience. Uh, we'll just go there again. Uh, on the main page, which makes life a little bit easier and more informative for the card operator. Um, yeah, there's also a progress bar on the, the fill level for the truck. Um, the new help in the cloud tab, which is the really impressive part. But there's one other uh, difference. I think I might have already mentioned, we'll just talk about this one. There's one other difference in the way that you drill down uh, to, to drill down, to go from, say, grower to drill down to the farms. You tap on the line now instead of this, the eye with the circle. Maybe I'll turn on the screen sharing again or the webcam. Okay, there we are. So to, to drill down, say from grower to farm to field, it used to be that you had to accurately tap the eye with the circle. Now it's just tap on the on the line itself much easier. And uh, for those uh, few situations where you need to, to edit the name, now you just have to accurately tap the eye with the circle and you can edit the name. And again, with the cloud service that synchronizes across all devices, um, for, for guys that do uh, have multiple carts, let's say, and they want to configure their farms and such fields on a single unit with the pro service it synchronizes between all of them so it makes that easy the other piece that i i didn't mention was the carry forward so if you go to the seasons tab here you can see excuse me the settings tab there's general settings and there's the paired devices but between those two is the is the uh, crop seasons the crop seasons are put there they allow you to set a date, you close season, you tap on that, you can set a date between the current season and the previous season. And uh, what that does is it ensures that when you, when you start out on this current season, all your field totals are set to zero and you don't see any of the old transactions. Um, last year, we had this new feature, this feature, uh, but we got some feedback that people wanted to be able, have the system work a little bit more flexibly than what we had provided. So what we had last year was that although fields would be zeroed out between seasons, bins or destinations in general would not be. So whatever you had in, in your bins at the end of the previous season showed up at the beginning of the next season. And our thinking at the time was that uh, that's just the way they are. They're accumulators. It, you, you might end up with 30,000 pounds in a particular uh, bush, a particular bin. And, and it stays there unless you transfer out to, to say, sell it or transfer in from another bin. In either case, the, uh, the totals would, would update either up or down based on that. But people wanted the flexibility to know, just arbitrarily say that that particular bin is zeroed at the, at the beginning of the next season. So if you go to the destinations tab now, uh, you can see that not only can you name the bin, you can see the inventory on it, but there's now a switch that defaults to on to either carry forward through seasons or not. So carry forward through seasons is the way, by default, the way that it worked last year. So uh, if you had 30,000 bushels in it, you'll have that uh, at the beginning of next season. If you don't want that behavior, you just simply turn that off for uh, a particular bin. Maybe you want to do that on each and every one of your bins. You just go through and do that. And then at the end of a season, starting the next season, those destinations start at zero. So we've added a little bit more flexibility there. All right, and I think I covered uh, everything that I had intended to. So now I think we might uh, take some, some questions. All right, so um, people can type their questions in. We've got a question here. It says, can you take crops off that you don't use? We don't have a mechanism currently to retire anything, whether it's fields or trucks or destinations or, or anything. Um, if, you have, if you created a truck 
and there was never any transactions associated with that truck, or if you created a field and then there was never any, any data associated with that field, yes, you can delete them. But once they have data in, there's no way that we have currently to retire them. Uh, retire is a great word because like with operators, there may be some, some times where that's literally what's happening and you would want to just get them off of, off of your moving forward kind of uh, setup. That's something that we have had requests for and we are considering uh, in future. We're not there just yet. Um, the seasons does let you, um, at, like I say, not see the data from previous ones, but you're going to definitely see the configuration. If you had if you had 100 fields configured last season, you're going to see all 100 again this season, even if you're not farming all of them. So we'll work toward that. The next one is, is subscription price in Canadian or U.S.? It's in U.S. dollars, $99. So these days, uh, Canadian pricing would be in the – it's – you end up getting charged U.S. dollars, so your bank will do the or Visa will do the conversion, but it'd be in the neighborhood of $130 per seat. It says, what if I accidentally unload a truck into the wrong bin? Can I go back and transfer the weight into a different bin manually? Definitely, you can do that. Um, you can uh, you can edit the transaction, simple as tapping, and you move it from this bin to that bin. Very, very, very simple. You can also add transfers. Uh, in, in the case where, uh, let's say that you're, you intended to, to load the entire truck load into bin three, but you found that bin three didn't have the room. So what you can do is you can do what you would normally do, you know, fill as much as you can into bin three and the rest into bin five or something. And, but you can tell the system I emptied into bin three because you only get one choice as to what, what the bin was. You could always edit it after the fact, but you're going to select either bin or three or five. So select three, say I emptied it, and then you do a transfer for your estimate as to how much weight it was that actually ended up in bin five. So you transfer out from bin three to bin five. This ability to transfer from uh, from uh, destinations is one of the reasons that we we didn't um, we didn't understand that there was a ne necessity by at least in, for some users to add that carry forward switch or not because we thought you would just simply transfer out of a bin. Is if you have multiple grain carts and do not have the cloud enabled, can you push the field names, truck names, and storage names to another iPad? Um, let's see, multiple and do not have the cloud. No, no, that, that's a manual process. The pro service allows um, connection of all of these different devices. Can you edit info for loads on the website, like moisture back at, at grain system? So currently, uh, there's not as much capability in terms of editing on the web app as there is uh, on the mobile app. There's ultimate flexibility on the, on the mobile app, but that's coming. We're, uh, we just keep adding more and more features to this. We expect to add more and more reports. I guess one thing we didn't see is, uh, is the home screen for the web app. So here I only had a couple fields and, and this and that, a couple commodities. But you could have a screen showing your overall commodity um, totals across all bins and that sort of thing. So there's a graph there. Currently that graph doesn't auto-update, but it will. There's a, we're working on all sorts of extra features. What if my combine operator loads a truck directly by passing the grain cart? Can I create a transaction to add to the bin manual? Definitely. Yeah, you can create it. Uh, um, and, and, and mirror the, the reality. How do you change the function of the circled eye from being the folder over the names uh, change setting? You don't change it. Uh, the, previous, uh, the previous app released a year ago had the reversed functionality to what we currently have. So uh, moving forward, especially like the only app that currently supports the cloud is the new version. And with that one, the behavior is that if you tap anywhere in the horizontal line that is the field, not the field, but the grower or the farmer or the truck group, this kind of thing, it drills down in anywhere in the line except where the eye in the circle is. If instead you hit the eye in the circle, it lets you edit the name of that particular item. How big a data plan should I get for Arrow? I don't have an answer right there right now. Well, what I will say is um, the amount of data that we 
we collect, the data is really rich, lots of great information in it, lots and lots of harvest information, but it is tiny with respect to, let's say, the memory sizes on mobile devices these days. So when, uh, this isn't your answer to your question, I understand, but when selecting a mobile device, select the one that suits you. Uh, if you want to watch lots of movies on it, get, get a big one for memory, etc. You can save money and get the smallest one available uh, for uh, for the data that from year to year to year. It's, it's just tiny in comparison. Uh, quickly, more sidebar there is make sure that when you buy a mobile device for uh, for Libra and in working with Aero, etc., that you buy one that is compatible. So we're not compatible with any mobile devices, excuse me, with any mobile devices that don't have Bluetooth Smart uh, and they have to have the right level of operating system and that sort of thing. So in terms of hardware, any iPad, whether it's a mini or an Air, Air 2, et cetera, except for the original iPad that's of the oldest first two generations. Okay, so any mini, but uh, an iPad regular generation three or later. That's good, and we do support a number of Android devices as well, but keep in mind, and I think I explained it earlier, that we do develop for Apple first, so resources to get to the Android, are, it always lags in our development cycle. Uh, back to the, the size of the plan, uh, I, don't, I don't have an answer for that, but we'll probably update our frequently asked questions at some point to, to address that. Could you briefly outline the best way or ways to make contact with your support department? Yeah, definitely. Our uh, 1888 number, I think it's, uh, it's uh, two, yeah, 1888 You can select support and, and you can get in touch with us. And uh, we're, oh yeah, I guess through Twitter and, and other social media kinds of things. Um, we're always help, happy to help out and, uh, and your dealers certainly also will be a great, uh, a great resource. Uh, I'm out of questions at the moment, but I'm very happy to answer any more. So if you if you uh, can think of any, please type something in. We wait another minute or here in case in case um, is any burning questions. What's the list price? Uh, Libra, okay, the list price for Libra um, is based on US dollars of $1,900. So um, the, the Canadian price in the last number of months has been $2,450 Canadian. And that gets you the electronics. And that's compatible with really any, virtually any industry standard load bars. Typically for after, uh, like aftermarket sales, uh, a customer would already have a weighing system uh, and then they just put on our bar, uh, our box on their cart, wired in, really simple. Uh, so they need that, that weighing system. People typically call them scales, but that includes the weigh bars, load cells, as well as the uh, wiring and junction box. And then the customer also has to provide his own compatible mobile device. We don't get into that. The app is downloaded for free. You don't have to buy the product to download the app and give it a spin and see what you think. Uh, so, <clears throat> pardon me. So again, nineteen hundred dollars U.S. or twenty-four fifty Canadian. Uh, Aero is again. There's the two things. There's Basic and there's Pro. Basic is free. As many accounts or as many users as you want. And if you had five grain carts and you got Libra systems that are compatible with it, of course, uh, data. You just create as many users as you like or as many accounts, and and the data flows there, no cost to you. Uh, for Pro, it's again ninety-nine dollars U.S. So roughly one hundred thirty dollars Canadian currently. But bear in mind that it will charge 99 US dollars, uh, even to a Canadian customer, and, and then the visa would do the, the conversion. And, uh, and that gets you that pro level of service. But a few more questions now. Adding crops, okay. So uh, from, the, from the web app, you can do that by the crops tab, and you just add a crop. Uh, like if we're, if we're speaking of commodities, like crops, then you just add a commodity or add a crop and you can name it. You can uh, add information about it, like the standard moisture and standard test weights. Um, and then you can select that and you associate that with a field. 
if we uh, if we look on a mobile device now just do it one moment let's see okay wait a little bit some technical yeah okay so if we look at the the fields level where i just double tapped on the fields etc and takes me back down to growers and such so we'll drill into a particular field let's let's actually create a field so i go plus enter a field so this my field and uh, it, let's say it defaults to 160 acres that's great i can select a, a commodity and here i can select from the list of pre-populated commodities if i want to add a new uh, variety or something that just isn't in the list hit the plus button and you can create a new one so this is new variety and we give it a, a standard uh, uh, test weight of 56 pounds per bushel and a moisture of 13 and a half if that's what it is done and now it's at, uh, there it is new variety so I can select that from my field I go back and now I've got a new my field uh, has a new variety as a selected commodity and it's set up for 160 acres and that's that and now i can select that and start start uh, harvesting that the uh so any features coming up in the in new versions of libra yeah we don't have like we've just released our latest version about three weeks ago to to launch the cloud service, and it's got a few little little features that we talked about, as well as the big one that's the cloud integration. Um, what I guess I didn't talk about, uh, which I'll just mention, is is the fact that we've set ourselves up to be to allow integration with other uh, data management software companies, and so you you may um, subscribe to a particular farm management or agronomy company that has a web service of sorts that helps you manage. Uh, there's a, a distinct possibility that, that we'll be working together to get your account data connected to your uh, third-party account and that sort of thing. So data can flow back and forth. Um, that is a, a new feature that those that kind of thing will be coming up, um, you know, over time with Aero. It's not so much of a, a Libra uh, feature, but it, it's all part of the same experience potentially. And that would be available for Pro, not for uh, for basic. Uh, other features that we would expect to provide, and they're on our on our roadmap. But we're not working on them today. Uh, is the ability to automatically select uh, fields using the GPS and that sort of thing. So if you're if you're selecting a mobile device, uh, I would me personally, I would definitely select one with the, the amount of memory that I like just on my mobile mobile device. I would select the color I like. I would select the size of display to, um, you know, pardon me, you're going to hear that, uh, that uh, construction sound again. Anyway, uh, select the size of display that sort of fits your cart operator's vision. So an older person may appreciate a larger screen. Um, you know, if your vision is great, you may want to get away with a mini or something like that, which is still a large uh, display and saves some money. Um, but also when selecting a mobile device, you will probably want to consider whether or not it comes with uh, a data package so it doesn't have a sim card so you can instantly can, uh, get data to and from the cloud because that works uh, hand in hand with aero um, currently it's those at, at least with apple devices you you choose one that does support data and that same one will then have gps capability currently uh, libra records the gps locations of every load that is recorded uh, it records those locations with each load and uh, in future, talking about upcoming features, we would expect, and I'll, I'll uh, again highlight that we're not working on it today, but it's on our roadmap, that using GPS, we would be able to automatically select the field for the operator, making his life one step easier yet. And another one is, uh, have you had anyone use your system for forage operations? We've had a number of users use it in a, in a number of different places, and it's, you know, the vast majority are using it for, for grain harvesting, of course. But we have had people use it for, uh, for feed mixers and just delighted with the accuracy, which is really great news. 
Um, we have had people interested, like that are you know are doing forage operations. We've had calls, and I just don't actually recall whether or not they've used it for that or not. And uh, I've got a, a question that simply, how does that happen? And I'm not entirely sure. Uh, I think it probably with, is referencing a, uh, a previous question, but I, I didn't get it soon enough. So I'm not sure what it is that uh, the, uh, the attendee was asking about. So perhaps you could ask that one again. And it says, how long should the battery last? Is it a proprietary battery only available from a dealer? That's a great question. So a battery will last more than a season. Um, so typically it's going to last for people that aren't custom harvesters, it's going to last you all harvest long, no matter how large your operation is, you know, within reason, but there's a lot of really large operations and it'll last for all of that. And it should then last the rest of the year, but put a fresh one in before harvest of the, of the following year. Is it a proprietary battery? Uh, it is an industrial battery. It's a 3.6 volt lithium, um, double A, and so it's not something that Energizer or Duracell provides so far as I know. It's uh, more industrial than that. It's the same kind of thing that you'll find in an alarm panel. And so if you uh, have access to an alarm store uh, in your community, then chances are they'll have the right, you know, a, a compatible battery anyway. The one we've selected is a Tataran uh, TL5903. And it, uh, we've scrutinized the specifications on that one, and it is just great across temperature and across uh, the, the load that's put on it and that sort of thing. So that's the one we recommend, but in a pinch, uh, any 3.6 volt lithium AA will get the job done. We do have them available uh, from our uh, factory. Uh, like I say, it's not proprietary in the sense that it's not our battery, it's, but it's industrial. And we have them so we can ship them out uh, via mail within Canada. Uh, and we do ask that our dealers keep them stocked so that their customers are, are uh, happy. And another qu question, same uh, attendee asking, should the battery be taken out off season? It's not really necessary. The electronics itself is designed to be extremely miserly. So um, yes, it does, it does power the load cells, which is a lot of juice. And that sort of thing. But when it's not in operation, either you haven't been weighing for, say, an hour uh, or more, it shuts that down and it just goes into a, uh, like a limp mode. It's just really, really tiny amount of power that's used. Also, if you uh, kill the app, so you take the iPad away, and, or I don't mean delete the app. Don't do that because your data is in the app unless you have data backup uh, through, through Arrow or you're uh, sending your data home. But don't delete the app. But if you stop the app, in a traditional manner that's done on these mobile devices, then uh, then uh, the system goes into sleep. So you shouldn't have to. I would say that if you choose to, yeah, you're going to save a little bit of power. Ah, any plans to work with myjohndeer.com? And the answer is yes. Uh, we we are, have gone to the developer developers conference. Uh, where they announced last year their huge, I think it was last year or at least earlier this year, huge uh, undertaking of investing a lot of money into that process, into that program and a lot of people as well. And uh, we're working with them to integrate their APIs, so that's their software interface between their cloud system and our cloud system. And uh, there's lots of very exciting things uh, uh, potentially on the horizon there. Uh, people are always very, very interested in using our products to help calibrate yield maps, and so we're going to be looking into that sort of thing. Can I zero up my scale without recalibrating? Definitely, yeah. And uh, it's a great question. Um, so, let's see, what, that screen there? Yeah, so. Zeroing out of scale should not be confused with Tearing. Tearing is just like a bookmark is the way I think of it. And if you want to just take whatever's on the cart and pretend it's zero, you just hit tear. When you're done pretending, you can hit clear. And so, like I say, you go to zero, then any cart, then any weight increase goes up from zero, any weight decrease goes down from zero. So that's what that's used for. It's like the, the old memory button on a four function calculator. Uh, whereas if you go to the device tab, uh, there's a, a 
right about the center of the screen, it shows zero scale in blue text. That is where you tap on that when you know your cart is empty and you want to tell the electronics what you're sensing right now is empty. And uh, the, the question says, can I zero out my scale without recalibrating? Definitely. Um, the calibration factor is the multiplier that changes the, I guess it would be called the gain of the system. Uh, you know, it's a scalar, whereas the zero is an offset. Yeah, and uh, it doesn't make any difference to the automatic uh, load uh, detection and that sort of thing, unload detection, because all, all that does is do a great job of, of figuring out where the weight started and where the weight stopped. So whether or not uh, it's, whether or not it's, uh, it started here and ended here, or started here and ended here, the, the difference between those two is the same amount, and that's what gets recorded. So it doesn't matter about zeroing it up. It says the empty scale weight seems to increase over time. Well, yeah, that this may be the case, and that would be uh, reflective of your load bars, not the, or, and or wiring, not the Libra system, and you would uh, experience that regardless of, of whose weighing system that is. Uh, again, if, if, uh, you, you should feel free to, to re-zero whenever you choose. Whenever you, it seems like it's just drifted a little bit, re-zero, and you're fine. It won't make any difference. Any chance there will be a 12-volt supply from the tractor option? Yes, there's a, uh, more than a good chance. We're, we're working on that as an option for future, and uh, uh, that's for those customers that would prefer that, uh, we're going to try and, uh, and support that. And at the moment, there are no further questions. Um, Want to squeeze in some last minute ones? We'll wait maybe one more minute. And uh, if there's nothing else, we'll call that the end of the seminar. And we appreciate that. Uh, I seem to be having some technical issue. Let me see. I'd like to show the last slide, but I don't have that right now. Okay. Ah, we got an accolade here. So thanks very much for those that, uh, that participated. And we have our screen back again. And uh, so thanks very much for attending. I appreciate the opportunity to, uh, to tell you all about this. It's very exciting for us, and, uh, and I think that uh, it's only going to become more so with time. So if you have any further questions and you didn't get a chance to, to interact here, uh, please just send them to us at info at or give us a call. Thanks so much. That's it for sure? Yeah. Oh, no.